name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the celebration for the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I rise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Those of you participating in this Mass through television, bright and early 6.30 Sunday morning, do so on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, the most important day of the week, at least in my opinion. And we recall that every Sunday is meant to be, in a sense, another Easter, reminding us always of the resurrection of Jesus after he gave his life for the forgiveness of our sins on the cross. But this particular Lord's Day also happens to be a Sunday that in our culture today is Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, perhaps if you've gotten up early to pray for your favorite football team, the Kansas City Chiefs or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're all fired up, all fired up to cheer your team on and maybe even pray for them during this Mass. And that's okay. And maybe you're even thinking about firing up your outdoor grill, even in, if it's still a little chilly outside to prepare something to eat. And maybe you're also thinking about uh, hopefully a very small Super Bowl gathering in your home uh, in accordance with the COVID-19 regulations, but still preparing some snacks so that, uh, uh, or some other food so they can sit down and get ready to watch the Super Bowl commercials and the, the football game that they put in between those commercials. That's kind of what the Super Bowl has developed in our world today. You know, in a sense, we could say that the mother-in-law of Simon who we know as Simon Peter, now as the Apostle Saint Peter, she was fired up too. We hear that she has a fever. And literally in the Greek language that <clears throat> Saint Mark wrote his gospel, could say that her bones were on fire or that her bones were filled with fire. That's the literal translation of this phrase from the scriptures. She was suffering perhaps from malaria or perhaps some type of bone illness. Uh, and she was sick in bed. She couldn't get up uh, and perhaps had been excited about hearing that th this new teacher was coming to her home to prepare a special meal for him, to hear that her son-in-law had been invited to be one of the disciples of Jesus. And she was lying in bed helpless, her bones on fire. She might even been, have been tempted being a woman of the Jewish faith, to, to feel like Saint Job in our first reading. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. If you hear any banging noises actually in this chapel, it's the wind blowing here in Yakima as we record this mass. So all of us have had those experiences of illness or, or estrangement in the family or something that has uh, drained the life or the hope from us. And just as Jesus came to the mother-in-law of Simon 
and reached out to grasp her hand. He reaches out to grasp our hands as well. And oftentimes the way that he does that is to empower those uh, who he calls to be his disciples, those who through their baptism are called to repeat in our lives the very life of Jesus Christ. He calls us to reach out to those in need, those who feel helpless, those who are without hope. and invites them again to service. We hear that uh, Simon's mother-in-law arises and immediately waits on them. That's one way that that phrase can be translated. Uh, that uh, actually the Greek word used there is diakonia, from which we get our word deacon. She serves in this particular way that is meant to be an echo in the gospel of the service in the church that all people are called to. I suppose a cynical person can say that Jesus healed her because he wanted to have a square meal and he didn't want to have to fix it himself. But, you know, what we're going to find as we work our way through the Gospel of St. Mark this year is that time and again it is women who respond uh, in the ways of faith. The poor woman in the temple who gives her last two small copper coins. Jesus says that's worth more than any gift because she gave everything that she had. The woman who anointed Jesus before uh, his death in anticipation of his death and burial. The women who stood by him at the cross when his disciples had all fled. The women who ran to the tomb to anoint his body after death to see what had become of him. And they were afraid and they didn't heed the message of an angel who said, go tell the disciples that Jesus is risen, but Mary Magdalene did. And so why she's come to be known as the apostle to the apostles. Jesus appeared to her and sent her to tell the disciples and they didn't believe her either. It was only when Jesus appeared to the 11 apostles in the upper room, uh, two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And actually they didn't believe those disciples either, but when he appeared to the 11 himself, uh, pointed out that their hearts were still hard, that they finally believed. But then, he gave them the Great Commission to go out and baptize every creature, Jesus says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what we're called to do, to, to recognize through our baptism the call to service to diaconia, to imitate the, the, the many Christian witnesses and leaders who have given us their example over the centuries. Um, regardless of whether we feel disappointed whether our favorite football team loses today, to remember uh, that more, much more seriously, all those who are suffering in the world need our help, need our love, and need our prayers. Let's pray that we will be good and faithful servants then as Jesus reaches out to each one of us today. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all, all things were made. For, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Filled with trust, we offer our prayer. For those who find life on earth a drudgery, that they may find renewed energy and gratitude for the gift of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly of our Diocese of Yakima, that we might be able to follow the Lord's example of finding quiet time away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, in you we take refuge. Incline your ear to us and save us. Be our fortress and stronghold through Christ our Lord. May brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of his cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in, into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. First, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should should enter enter under my roof, roof, but only say say the the word, word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. healed. Let us pray. O God, who willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that, made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.